in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina, home to white-tailed deer, black bears, hundreds of species of birds, rattlesnakes, turtles, and several species of squirrels. One of the most common squirrels in these parts is the Glaucomus sabrinus, or more commonly known as the Northern Flying Squirrel. Now, this is my apprentice, Michael Michael, a man with two first names, but he works harder than anyone I know. And my name is David Mattenborough. And today, we're gonna to be taking a little adventure to find us a Northern Squirrel. Northern Flying Squirrels once flourished in these mountain ranges, but due to deforestation, human development, pollution, competitive exclusion with the southern flying squirrel, they are on the verge of going extinct here in North Carolina. Now, let's pump on into the woods this way and see if we can find us one of these critters. They are nocturnal, so it might be difficult, but we are approaching dusk, so hopefully we can find one of these critters out and about foraging for food. Take a look. After you, I'll pop in here. The spider webs during this time of year are terrible. And also, I think I saw one over there. Did you, did you hear it? I thought I heard something there. I'm gonna walk right down and see. Yeah, keep on the tracks, man. We need to see one of these. It's about that time. They should be out foraging. Look at here. Well, he's up there. This could be a little little toad here we found. Another wondrous creature found in these uh, Appalachian Mountains. Oh, got away from me there. Have a look at it, Dave. It's a magnificent creature. Righto, on your way, friend. I think we got ourselves a site right here. Nice. The northern flying squirrels have a rather unique diet. They consume lichens, which are a kind of tree fungus, and occasionally they feast on fruits and nuts. Another rather interesting food that the northern flying squirrel consumes is the microhizol fungi, which is also known as the truffle. Now, these are not to be confused with the French dessert. They are uh, rather astonishing, these truffles. They give off a chemical signal when they are ripe, and the uh, flying squirrels can sense this, and they come up, and a site like this one here, where a truffle once was, and they dig up these truffles because of the scent they put off, and um, which is an impressive feat that uh, not, not many other mammals can accomplish. Now, uh, all this talk about truffles is making me quite hungry. What do you think, Michael? Would you like to indulge yourself in a truffle? Right oh. There you go. Help yourself, man. Oh, thanks, man. Actually, I think I might see some squirrel droppings right there. Might be onto something. No kidding, man. Look at that there. That's squirrel droppings of its finest, Mike. Is it? Look at that. Get a good look at that, Mike. That is northern squirrel droppings. At least we know we got one around here. Not walking around for nothing. Oh, that means there's probably prime micro hizol fungi all over these lands. All right, let's keep pumping this way and see if we can find us one in the weeds. I might see one right up there. Do you see it? Yeah. All right, let's go get a closer look. Yes, there it is one. What is that? For the most part, northern flying squirrels reside in boreal and north temperate conifer and northern hardwood forests, as found in the northern United States and Canada. These areas usually have an abundance of hiding places for the squirrels such as snags, cavities, trees covered with lichens and moss, 
and a diverse array of berries and fungi. Cavities also provide a place for nests for these squirrels to raise their young. These homes for the northern flying squirrel are being destroyed, threatening the existence of the species. A quality habitat is key for the survival of the northern flying squirrel. Deforestation is threatening their homes and endangering the species. The decline in habitable areas could be a factor for genetic isolation leading to an overall decline in the species fitness. With the vast growth of residential and recreational development, it makes it difficult for the species, the Northern Flying Squirrel, to flourish. Motorways cutting through the Northern Flying Squirrel's natural habitat serve as a kind of blockade for these creatures, blocking them from their natural areas of foraging, creating it difficult for them to feed. Can you believe this guy? There's endangered squirrels out here. I think I heard one over there, Michael. Yeah. I believe so. Let's take a close look hand up there. Boy, it would be a treat to encounter one of these tonight. It should be out and about foraging right now. Anything? It's quite fair, though. You know, Michael, I think now would be a good time to talk about the importance of keeping the northern flying squirrel in its natural habitat because it's a part of a complex and interconnected network. You know, they are a critical food item for the endangered spotted owl. So right. Yeah. So, therefore, if the squirrel becomes extinct, it will have a negative effect on these owls. In addition, the northern flying squirrels and the mycorrhizal fungi have a mutual relationship. The squirrel's usage and dispersal of the fungi helps to maintain the forest and therefore the ecosystem. Wow. These little buggers should do a lot more than people think, eh? Yeah. Makes me want to encounter these even more. So we're here with scientist Barry. Barry, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the conservation efforts being made for these uh, northern flying squirrels. Well, David, over the last 25 years, a light has been put on the northern flying squirrel to expose its ecological importance. Various wildlife agencies put forth a lot of effort to educate people on the importance and positive effect that the northern flying squirrel has in its environment. And to quote G.I. Joe, Knowing is half the battle. That was a great quote, Barry. It is. It's also imperative, though, that we all do our part so that future generations can enjoy this majestic critter. I do agree, Barry. My name is David Mattenborough, and this is my apprentice, Michael Michael. A man with two first names. <laughs> 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 it's Mike Michael. These truffles are actually quite astonishing. They give off a chemical signal. Oh man, had a fly fly for a second. I thought it was going to sting me. Um, they give off a chemical signal. Get pumped up. You know? can't start the video right now. This is unacceptable. <laughs> Alright, how do I look? Alright, come on. We're good. I have caramel in it. I hate caramel. <laughs>